Sheffield, Britain's fifth largest city, like the rest of Britain's big cities, is in the calm before the coronavirus storm stage. Where barely a couple of weeks from now, everything is likely to change when coronavirus outbreaks start taking place across the UK. Because unfortunately, the NHS is barely able to cope with regular winter flu, let alone a strain that is a hundred times as deadly. So the NHS will soon be overwhelmed with seriously ill patients requiring intensive care and it won't take more than a dozen such patients to tip the healthcare systems over the edge in each of Britain's big cities such as Sheffield. Unable to cope with even small volumes of coronavirus ill where the only response to 111 calls will be for patients to self-quarantine themselves at home as hospitals become hotbeds for the transmission of the virus. So places definitely to stay clear of to avoid becoming infected. This week the people of Britain got a taste for how the coronavirus epidemic is going to break out in the UK. As apparently a Chinese woman infected with the coronavirus flew from China to the UK before she was put into quarantine in China boarded a flight to the UK with no regard to the risks of infecting fellow passengers on the plane, no regard to the staff and thousands of passengers at Heathrow Airport, where instead of declaring that she was infected with a killer virus on arrival, went through customer and border control, exited the airport and then proceeded to take an Uber taxi without regard to the driver or his family or the other passengers who would ride in the Uber after her to a nearby Lewisham hospital, walking into a &E department without regard to the staff and patients sat there, effectively declaring that I am ill with coronavirus or so please give me treatment on the NHS. This Chinese person's actions, as those of another pair in York a couple of weeks ago, have once more sent health officials scrambling to track down and test everyone who has been in contact with the infected person, including putting several members of staff at Lewisham Hospital into quarantine. However, there appears to be a delay of about four days before the general public are informed of infection incidents, which just like China risks losing control of outbreaks. This illustrates why the coronavirus outbreaks in Britain and across the rest of the world are inevitable as a consequence of selfish Chinese people fleeing the communist state who basically don't give a shit about anyone but themselves as a consequence of being born into a totalitarian state where people are taught not to think beyond that which the communist party allows for under threat of committing a thought crime that results in a don't give a shit attitude towards fellow citizens that is the primary reason why the virus raged for a whole month before Chinese state started to take action because citizens tended to ignore strangers dropping dead on the streets as they're being brainwashed to keep their heads down the only thing that matters is themselves and their immediate family and so as a quarantine loomed in Wuhan some 5 million fled the city taking the virus with them spreading it out across the whole of China and not once thinking of what they were doing to their own country the Chinese Communist regime's propaganda of the past week of having brought the coronavirus outbreak under control by referring to daily falling infection rates from a peak of about 4,500 to 2,000 has now been completely blown away following the declaration of a huge 33% jump in the number of infections, i.e. 15,000 totaling 60,000 Thursday. Also, the number of deaths jumped sharply higher to 1369 from 1115. This begs the question of how many cases and deaths in the preceding weeks are missing from the graph. Which illustrates why I've been stating for several weeks that China's coronavirus statistics just cannot be trusted, where the true number of infections and deaths could easily be triple the official data. So the 15k jump in one day should not be so surprising given that China is hitting capacity constraints 
its ability to diagnose cases of and deaths as the primary objective is to halt the pandemic rather than the count numbers. So even those suspected of being infected are being isolated by force or told to go home in self-quarantine far away from the overflowing hospitals and medical centres, thus greatly masking the true number of infections. Coronavirus spread day 68 update. My forecast for the number of infections and deaths by the 14th of February 2020 was actual reported. Forecast infections 154,000, actual reported 65,000, so 42% difference. Deaths 4,334, actual 1,491, that's 34%. Were this trend to continue into the end of February 2020, then the number of infected would total 421,000, whilst the number of deaths would total 9,630. So the latest data implies a lower spread but still a relatively high mortality rate of about 2.3%. In reality the actual number of infections and deaths is likely closer to the forecast than what China's healthcare system hitting capacity constraints implies. As for some weeks all those even suspected of being infected are not being met by medical staff but by a barely protected army of police. The fact that China is grossly underreporting the number of cases translates into a the number of infections outside of China will continue to rapidly increase as contact with infected Chinese people acts as sparks for epidemics elsewhere. B that the outbreak in China will fail to subside, which is what it should do if Chinese statistics were accurate, i.e. the pandemic would basically come to an end within a couple of weeks or so. But instead I expect the number of infections to continue at a high rate for several more months. So I still expect the actual pool of infected to pass 1 million towards the end of February and thus the risks of a global pandemic remain highly probable. And that there are large susceptible populations with poor healthcare infrastructure such as India that announced its first infections over a week ago where outbreaks could quickly overwhelm healthcare systems. Also that a vaccine is still a good four months away, so far too late to have any impact on this pandemic. The bottom line is not to be fooled by coronavirus statistics out of China. The pandemic is not under control and the number of infected has likely already passed 150,000. We likewise the number of deaths exceeding 2,000 or near twice the official number, the evidence of which is literally being cremated. Therefore, given the actual continuing rate of spread of the virus in China and the forecast and trajectories for the rest of the world is currently one of being in the calm before the storm stage, with likely several outbreaks that risk overwhelming healthcare systems around the world, as has happened in China. What's more worrying is that when one looks at the world map, apparently there are no cases of the virus in Africa or South and Central America. That is very hard to believe. Instead suggest there are hidden outbreaks underway in those regions that will only make the light of day when the body bags start piling up. Until then, don't be fooled into a false sense of security. The pandemic is coming to your nation. UK Coronavirus Trend Forecast 2020 Taking account the actual trend trajectory of China's outbreak and allowing for the fact that China is under the number of cases by at least 50% and that the UK is expected to be more open in reporting and handling of coronavirus cases Thus, with a better informed public, should prove better able to contain coronavirus outbreaks, even if there currently exists a four day lag that is not good. Thus, my forecast conclusion is for the UK to target a trend towards 5,000 infections by the end of March 2020, which will likely result in over 1,000 hospitalizations and unfortunately some 90 deaths.
which was putting the NHS under extra strain. However, Britain should be able to cope with the outbreaks up to that point. So I expect the number of infections to only really start taking off early March when the number infected past 100 and soon start to accelerate into the hundreds. Early March is also when I unfortunately expect the first reported death as a consequence of coronavirus, at which time there will increasingly be economic consequences, especially for the travel, holidays, retail and event sectors as consumer behaviour will undoubtedly change in attempts to avoid the risk of infections as we have witnessed in China where the huge mega cities the size of London have turned into ghost towns that will likely be replicated in outbreak hotspots across the UK. So the UK is still in the calm before the storm stage so people should take measures to protect themselves by both limiting exposure to risk of the viral particles i.e. by staying clear of those who may have recently been in China and by boosting one's immune system so as to better cope with an infection. So how bad could things get in Sheffield by the end of March? Well 5,000 national forecast cases would translate into about 60 cases in Sheffield resulting in two or three deaths which may not sound like a lot but enough to spark paralysis as the general population attempts to avoid becoming infected by which time likely most of Sheffield schools will be closed to avoid further transmission of the virus and likely many if not all public events will have been cancelled by then. So UK cities such as Sheffield are still in the calm before the storm stage which means people should take measures to protect themselves by both limiting exposure to the risk of the viral particles which in the first instance means steering clear of those who have been in contact with people from China and then any large crowds and queues i.e. places such as meadows, shopping centre, the city centre, public toilets, Sheffield's hospitals and universities with their large Chinese student populations that is likely to be a hotbed for sparks of infection as we recently saw with the case at York University. Remember it only takes one inconsiderate traveller from China to spark an epidemic in the UK. So Britain's university cities are at a very high risk of outbreaks. Whilst people can stock up on masks, however my understanding is they are not that useful in infection pre prevention. More for those already infected to wear masks to prevent infecting others. However, do take this calm before the storm stage to boost one's immune system to normal levels by taking vitamin C and D supplements so as to better cope when being infected and eat plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables. Another easy way to boost the immune system is to ensure one gets plenty of sleep. And practice good hand hygiene. Wash your hands frequently and avoid touching your face and mouth and if you become infected wear a mask to avoid infecting others. The city of Sheffield and the UK will make it through to the other side of this pandemic as the virus is expected to subside from around mid-May as temperatures start to rise when life can get back to normal. Until then stay safe as Britain rides out the coming coronavirus storm.